Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Magical Human Show. And in preparing for today's show, we've realised we're a little bit out of sync with the new moon and the full moon. So we've got a full moon next week. So that means our next one of these sessions, we're going to bump a week so we can realign. So you hopefully you won't miss us. You'll find us eventually. Claire, tell us about this full moon next week. Is it Taurus, did you say? No, I did not, Tamar. Um, it is... Talking rubbish. It is a full moon in Sagittarius next oh. week. Um, and Other things are in Taurus. That's yeah. where you got that from. 23rd next week. So the 23rd is Thursday next week. So it's a full moon in Sagittarius. You're going to have to wait there um, because I haven't looked into this yet because I have been doing other things, um, looking into the colour of time at the moment. There's been en enough stuff going on. So I'm going to talk about that, first of all, and just say, as we know, we're under the willow season. So this is like I'm coming, I'm meeting a lot of people in grief. And willow is a fantastic tree for grief because it is about that connection to the deeper emotions and releasing them into earth so they can be processed. And with us still being in Taurus season until next week, which on the um, what day is it next week that we come out of this, we come out of it um, and go into Gemini on the 20th. We've got all these planets in Taurus. So there's a kind of real practical energy around at the moment, real pragmatic. And the focus is financial security because for, for ourselves, because Taurus is all about that, really. It's all about finances. And it's not just about that. It's a very central planet. So I would also argue it's about the body and people are doing things to sort their health out and noticing their health, things are coming up that they need to process. And really I'm about linking the body, kind of what is showing up in the body to what was originally possibly started by the mind or the spirit or a previous karmic relationship with someone else in spirit world and drawing that in so that the healing can be complete. Um, and under Willow, allowing that to kind of flow. So if people are feeling kind of, Things keep arriving out of nowhere, sudden, unexpected, kind of like, oh, God, I didn't expect that to happen. And feeling thwarted with things that they've been doing for a long while, projects not quite coming off the way that they thought they were going to come off. And kind of there can be a bit of resistance to change and a bit of kind of, you know, resentment about the need to change things. But, you know, Pluto's retrograde, it's really forcing that change. And if you want that financial security, it's about going after the things that actually are going to bring you that, not what you hoped would bring you that or not because you've just done it a really long time and you don't want to change. This is like, no, you are going to change. You have to embrace change. And if you can kind of deal with the kind of minor chaos that's coming up from some of the planetary alignments with kind of using calling in the Taurus energy of just kind of giving yourself a little bit of space to reflect before you respond then that's really a good thing to do earth is very cooling so it's kind of you know it's asking for kind of that space father kind of earth runs not father earth saturn is ruler one of the earth rulers is all about time so it's kind of like slowing just looking processing Taurus is also about processing so um, fortune is favoring the brave at this time. So this is the time to strike out and follow your passions and things that make you excited in relation to your careers and not the things that just feel safe and, you know, that you come to out of a fear of lack of financial security. I think that's, I guess, the overall message is the fact that, you know, throw caution to the wind, do what makes your heart sing, stop worrying about whether you're going to be okay financially, you are going to be okay financially. And there's certainly with all these solar flares, stepping into the power of self, taking responsibility for self, there's very much that kind of energy as well, is kind of like upgrades, come on, come on. And also highlighting the shadows and so relationship um, with others that are a bit shady um, might be falling away at this point in time as well or being revealed for what they truly are and that can be also upsetting but again Willow is inviting us to cry out those tears and acknowledge them so 
That's what I have to say about this moment in time and also integrity. Everything is about having integrity to yourself and then others. And integrity means owning yourself and your reactions and taking responsibility for that as opposed to thinking that you need to force situations and be in places that make you uncomfortable for the sake of your ego. Does that make sense? Yes. So you guys can talk amongst yourselves while I look at the fallout for next uh, full moon. <laughs> Give me a chance to study that. So there, you make of okay. that. Okay, well, <clears throat> I was fascinated, as I have been for a while, by the positions of these asteroids yeah. in my birth chart. And being as how, thanks to you, Claire, I was looking at Nessus and my family karma, I suddenly decided maybe it would be a good thing to do my mother's birth chart. Ooh. So interesting. So interesting. Because I've got Nessus in the house of communication and she's got Nessus in the house of relationships. And I now think I need to do my brother's because he's refusing to acknowledge that there's any such thing as ancestral karma and doesn't want to talk about it. So that's fine. He can stick his head in the sands if he wants to, but I still feel the urge to understand. I, I've always been a person who wants to try and get to the bottoms of things, asking questions and discovering new things. I mean, every day, darn it. It's just like, whoa, that as well? I didn't know that. And it's like, I just keep sharing these with people and they're going, Seriously, June, just stop telling me stuff. <laughs> Don't so you find that... this really interesting? And they're going, not really. <laughs> so what does that tell you about your ancestral karma from yours and your mother's birth chart? What are you learning from that? Well, <laughs> I I always feel the need to communicate about things, obviously. And people, some people don't want to talk to me about this stuff. And, and I don't think my mother would have either, to be honest with you, but my dad probably would have. He would have enjoyed this conversation. And um, yeah, and she struggled with her relationships. She really struggled with her relationships. Um, but I've got Pluto in a really interesting place in my chart. Let me just find it again. Because I was looking into Sedna as well. Yeah, seventh house. Which is? Relationship. Long-term relationships and business partnerships as well. Yep, yep. So um, Sedna has cropped up a lot. One of these asteroids that um, that Heather Ensworth and Pam Gregory talk about a lot. And the, the mythology around it, as far as I understood it, in a limited way until this very morning um, was that Sedna was in a difficult marriage and her father came to rescue her. But what Heather says today in her, well, it was yesterday she posted it, I think, her thing about the full moon coming up was that Sedna was actually working with Raven, the the. The mythical creature that they, they, you know they yeah working with that energy and um her father came to drag her back against her will it's not that she wanted to go back it seems he was dragging her back to their village whereas the way i understood it previously was that he was rescuing her from a vile husband but anyway it's still about the patriarchy because it's all about the men and and she and he was taking her back and then somehow raven got really annoyed about this and made a big storm and her dad threw her overboard because he wanted to save himself well she Sedna's her. father mm -hmm. well, raven cooked up a storm right okay yeah raven cooked up a storm and, and she was hanging onto the edge of the boat and he chopped her fingers off which then <clears throat> it looks like you haven't heard this story before this is amazing i thought you knew all this um and then and then the fingers fell down it's it's an inuit saga and, and, and the, the the fingers turned into the sea creatures 
the whales and the seals and the walruses and whatnot. And she ended up giving up and letting go. And it's transformation, transmutation. She turned into the goddess of the oceans. Well, she let go of, into her emotions, didn't she? She so, did. And she yep. let go of hanging on to the patriarchy. Yep. And let and when and this is so interesting because this is what I've been saying recently about the fact that by returning to our emotions, we have not been allowed our emotions for thousands of years. We prefer to be in our thinking brains. Emotions make us feel uncomfortable and people don't want to own their emotions. But by stepping into the emotions, you become empowered because you no longer feel embarrassed. You start to live by the way you feel and acknowledge that as a primary way to kind of, well, your primary voice and instinct rather than this part of you that may be giving you false information programmed by this part of it. So... I'm totally with you there, June. Have you gone quiet? Me? No. No, sorry. I thought you'd gone. Emma's listening. We're listening so we can hear you. No, no, you could. It just suddenly, June just felt very quiet. And I was like, is she okay? But she's fine. <laughs> Usually I'm going, mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think also that's very interesting what you say about emotions because I've always expressed my emotions. Can't help myself. It, they just come out. And, and then I felt embarrassed for other people having to deal with my emotions because they were too much for other people. I was always too much. You know that poem about the, the girl who was too much? Mm, that was me. <laughs> yeah. I was too much as well. And emotions had no place. And it made mm. me feel uncomfortable being emotional. So yep. I'm, so the poem, you will have to send me the poem because I basically am yeah, identifying with you on that level, June. Mm. What about you, Tamar? Were you emotional? No, I wasn't allowed. Yeah. Shush, shush, be quiet. Don't take up space. But that's a that's a, a female thing. We're quiet, do more, you don't take up space. It's kind of a, yeah. Well, you'd have to be it. receptive to that to do it, though. I mean, I tried and I couldn't. <laughs> just, we have more self-control than you, June. <laughs> You're just like, okay, well. Always in trouble. I was the black. Always in trouble going like fighting the patriarchy literally getting into trouble constantly my parents thought I was a nightmare because I refused to conform yeah but I didn't do it on purpose I mean I just like no matter how hard I tried I I, I still couldn't fit in or I didn't belong or I trouble follows me it still does it's like, and now I'm gonna just embrace it yeah just just embrace it yes that's all we can do. And yeah, so it's that super interesting about Sedna. I find that really, really relevant and really interesting because I'm trying to encourage people to feel more comfortable with their emotional selves and to be more honest about their emotional selves. And to because, you know, I I met someone at the weekend. I was giving tarot readings, a lot of tarot readings at a well-being event that I was running. And I tapped into the person and I read their grief and um they were saying to me, I, I can't talk about this. I don't want to talk about this because I will literally lose control. I will be a mess. And I was like, what's wrong with being a mess? Oh, no, I can't do that. I can't hold anything together. But you will if you allow your Noah's Ark moment, allow the great flood. And then basically you will be able to, you know, those tears will eventually kind of calm and dry up. But if you don't let them go, it's like it gets sticky. And again, willow salic acid moving things through stopping blockages in the body um literally on a physical level like thinning the blood that's why people take aspirin and that comes from willow bark but kind of re like reducing that kind of sticky emotions in the body with by crying out the tears tears are very therapeutic they help with lowering cortisol levels and if you have grief or in whatever form that takes doesn't have to be the death of someone grief of a loss of something if you don't deal with it in that kind of calm measured way that you're comfortable with it will come out and you're not going to like when or how it comes out so putting it in a little box on a shelf if you don't let it come out it'll come out in a physical illness or it will come out in a marine, you know inopportune moment so there's something around having i think people like to feel like they're in control so having that contained space in which you can let that grief out you know, in a space where you feel safe to do so is really important. Yeah, it does need to feel safe, doesn't it? I mean, that, that's the really important thing. And that's partly why people do hang on to it, because they don't feel safe. But see, I was I was always a little bit reckless, and I didn't care, I guess, whether I felt safe or not. I just, 
And now as I get older, I'm thinking, yes, safety has its place. You know, I'm beginning to appreciate people wanting safety. So how did you escape, Tamar? How did I escape? Mm -hmm. From what? From being contained From being the good girl. So I'm just really annoying and out of control these days. Well, I think I think there's possibly a link with, and I have various theories about this, with neurodivergence. So if you're on the autistic spectrum or ADHD, there's something around that feeling of alien. I don't feel like I fit in. I don't feel like I'm a human being. I don't feel like I'm more like all of you. And you'll notice that in the playground, other kids will spot a neurodivergent kid way before any teacher does. They're weird, they're strange, they're different. But I also think that links into the, you know, you have like the different life forms that apparently we are. We're, I can't remember the names of any of them, but like, we're not actually human. We're here from somewhere else to do something. And I think it all kind of ties up. So I think there was something around, I got to 40 and I stopped caring what people thought. And I don't mind about being difficult now because I think if I feel it's justified, like if I think something's wrong, my sense of injustice kicks in and I go, actually, I'm going to say something because that's not right. Whereas a child, you're sort of, you have to be quiet and not say anything. Now I would say something. So I think I just kind of grew out of it. And I don't mind being difficult or being disliked or people disagreeing with me. So I think this is what I think. And I'm going to say it. Well, you see, that's so interesting because I'm at the same place. I just beginning to stop caring about upsetting people. I, I, I was constantly upsetting people and then getting bothered by it. But mm. I couldn't stop myself. So we're kind of in the same place from a different angle. That's yeah. so interesting, yeah. isn't it? It's mm. something around not internalizing other people's discomfort. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, when you're little, especially, and again, this is patriarchy, the females, you're there to keep everyone else comfortable. So you do all the housework, you do all the childcare because everyone else has to feel comfortable and okay. It doesn't matter what you feel. So it's something around moving into a space of, I'm still going to say the thing because I know that it's right but then you still feel bad that everyone else is uncomfortable, but then you move into that stage of actually your being uncomfortable is your thing. And that's for you to work out. Exactly. I think this is the right space for me to be in. And it's the just thing for me to say this thing. So if you feel uncomfortable, that's for you and that's your work to do. And it's that separation of I'm not responsible for the way you're feeling right now. Unless yes. I go and punch you in the face, then I have some responsibility, but you know what I mean? If it's their reaction, that's for them to work on. Yeah completely comply with that that's what I say take self-responsibility it's like you know own your stuff and also that discernment over what's yours and what's not and I think that certainly psychic people the more sensory people have picked up everyone else's vibrations and would have no context of what was theirs and what wasn't theirs so quite often feeling like you say June like if you're the person that can't keep quiet because something feels unfair as a as a young person and a, and a sensory young person you're going to pick up all the vibrations of an, everyone else's judgment on the fact that your your behavior has created this situation so the way you feel about it the responsibility you take on without kind of knowing what you're really doing and you you become a container for everybody else's unprocessed emotions, which makes you feel really dark. And I, I theorize that many people then turn to drugs and alcohol because they just want to shut it off. They just want to stop absorbing all of this stuff. And again, this is the world, this is the land of the uninitiated. And the more we get older and the more we return to spirituality, we have to get those sensitive young people that are able to read the nuances and initiate them, tell them they're gifted, make them feel there's context for this, there's a space for them, you know, and they're really magical. That's what I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. And I think that um, there's something about this whole we are all connected thing that some of us have been feeling for a really long time, but nobody was talking about it. And now everybody's realizing that we're all connected through the water, through our our auras that are merging with each other's. There's no way we can't feel other people's stuff. And this is what I think is happening with all those super sensitive children. They are completely overwhelmed by it because nobody is teaching them how this is actually fine. You can ground yourself and you can send all that disturbed energy from other people away because it isn't yours. And you can figure out what is yours that way. It's, it's so important. Yeah. 
And maybe they're being born, like, I think this is the time for ancestral clearing and karmic clearing, and they're being born to help with that clearing because their karmic lines have become so distorted because we've been in the dark ages for so long, you know, away from our spiritual selves. And now we're returning to that, recognizing the integrity and the importance of that part of ourselves for accountability purposes. Like I've been ranting on about this as well recently. Tell me what you think of this. I feel that um, people have lost accountability because the church for the last 2000 years and previous patriarchal religions have said, you know, you can do all these atrocities, but as long as you pay the church or you expre express your sin, you confess your sin, we'll make it better and you're OK. So people have been discharging their morality. They've been outsourcing it. Now, as people have moved away from the church, as someone pointed out to me yesterday and said, well, there's loads of people who don't go to church anymore. I was like, yeah, but they, then they just buy their way out of it. They don't feel they need a moral compass. You know, they're not people aren't necessarily aware of their moral compass, as it were. They can largely ignore it or dumb it down with, you know, materialization, drugs and alcohol again, other various ways. And this level of integrity needs to come up again. It needs people need to take this kind of on board and do something about it. So what do you think about morality bankruptcy? So there's it's a, a huge thing. shift. I know you two aren't particularly social media types, but something very interesting is going on at the moment. So recently there was the Met Gala, which is this big fancy do. I spotted it. For a ticket and they're going, people are starving and you're spending 75 grand on the ticket, let alone the outfits. And the outfits all look like something from the Hunger Games. And there was a person, who I don't know who they are, that they must be semi-famous, who wasn't even in the gala, was all dressed up. And they did this social media post saying, let them eat cake. And it's caused an absolute shit storm and everyone's blocking all the famous people on social media because they monetize it. That's how they make their money. And it's called, the, um, I think it's like hashtag block party or something like that. And they're blocking everyone, mostly because a lot of them haven't st stood up and defended um, the Palestine Israel thing that's going on Gaza. And, and they were kind of losing money hand over fist and everyone's going, we're not doing this anymore. We're not going to pay attention to what you're dressing in, what you're wearing, what you're selling, because there's more important things going on. So this shift of consciousness has kind of taken this huge leap and it's really interesting. Yeah. And so there's something yeah. around because if you know, if you, they were saying how I read this post the other day about a fine is only a fine if you're poor. If you're rich, it's the cost charged to do the thing that you, that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And how divisive it is so there's something around the the gap between rich and poor has become so big yeah that people are starting to go no no it's really interesting go the youngsters eh? can we get rid of the beckhams then because i can't really see the point what's that point what's the point of you they were probably there i have no idea but i know there was a whole thing about Katy perry wearing a dress and it is all and then she said i wasn't even there and it was, I don't know what happened. Somebody had done an AI thing of her in this dress that didn't exist and she wasn't there. It's just so bizarre. Mm. So bizarre. Yeah, I, I was at a well-being conference two weeks ago and there was this amazing, there's a DJ called Mark Devlin. I don't know if you've heard of him. He used to be a radio DJ, June, you probably have the Freedom Network. And he gives these amazing talks about the um, connection between the music industry and the um, acting industry and the army and the CIA and how most of these people have these Cinderella stories, which are absolute fabrication in order to justify their meteoric rise to power, which is actually because they are connected to the right families. And Joe Public can't actually penetrate this very closed industry, which is highly manipulated to bring about orchestrated cultural change. And he talks about the 60s being around the LSD movement and how the government was actually releasing the LSD and making sure that the books that everyone was reading that looked like they were being really avant-garde and stuff like that was all stooges and then he talks about in the 80s when ecstasy and MDMA came out, that was another government orchestration to kind of bring about this thing to make people feel they have some sense of freedom and that these rebellious things are going on. But actually, all these people are just completely and utterly owned by their families and by the, it's the minority. And it is so ridiculous. But those are our role models, are they not? Mm -hmm. And. The, he says, and somebody else was talking about um, the 
frequency of sound, which in the ancient times was 428. And you can get instruments. Um, Giles is talking about this that are like all tuned, like didgeridoos of 428. And that's a very healing, beautiful sound frequency. And this used to be played in the temples and in public spaces, and it helped people to connect with spirit with ease and feel really harmonized. So they changed the frequency to 440 so that people were a little bit angry, a little bit triggered, a little bit dumbed down again, stepping us and separating us from our kind of sovereign selves so that we'd be easier to control. And now we have things like this horrendous rap music, which is so sexualized, so violent. And the intention behind that is to bring about social discourse. It's like a huge, great way of, again, separating people out, making us fight with each other, making us basically easier to manipulate and control it's absolutely fascinating yes and actually more people are going back to <clears throat> christianity as well i keep hearing people saying that they've given up on things that they now realize are the dark art and i'm going no you're not no you're not <laughs> you're just swapping something you were doing before for something else and you're just finding something else to pin your hang your hat on the peg of it, it's um, people going back to christianity you Who? haven't heard this no i'm horrified is it because mm. it's a socially accepted version it's all the same thing under different names but that's a socially accepted is it because of the right wing uprising that's going on i don't think it's right or left i think there's that that's that's no more anymore anyway but it's it's people who um you like you know we were talking last time about how a lot of people are burying their souls on social media and 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 there you are you've just said it some of this stuff i feel instinctively is fabricated to garner a sense of like well i belong with the damaged people and they'll all understand me better because i admit that i was damaged and to some extent that is that is true we're all damaged but i've I, what i find difficult with that is then People are actually claiming, like you said, that they've got access to something because they've gone through this. Which they haven't. And and I I just I find it, yeah, it's really you know, there was more to this, but I, I've lost the plot. Willow, which I didn't manage to mention last time, the flower essence, just back to the willow. The remedy is for those who have suffered adversity or misfortune and find these things difficult to accept. Yeah, bitterness and resentment. Yes. As they judge life much by the success which it brings, they feel that they have not deserved so great a trial that it was unjust and they become embittered. They yeah. often take less interest and less activity in those things in life which they had previously enjoyed. So that fits kind of with that picture that people get stuck in that they made me like this. And, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And can't move forward because they found some level of kind of identity within their kind of, you know, it's a way of garnering people's attention isn't it it's a way of kind of you know garnering self-care I mean like care from others that they perhaps didn't get when they were growing up but you know you chose your parents it's like you know when are you going to do something about that but yeah, I accept the learning accept the learning I think that's my big message to people is it however difficult something might feel there is always a learning in it and you can't, you don't have to rejoice that things are difficult. Oh. That's just ridiculous. But, and certainly not rejoice that other people are having a difficult time. But, but say, okay, step back a little bit from it, ground yourself and look at what the learning might be and how you go forward. This is how I think we, we will, we will get through. This that is times. But I'm still horrified about the Christianity, June, that, you know, uh, Maybe it's because people are rediscovering their spiritual side. And Christianity, as Tamar points out, it feels like the only viable option, you know, because it feels like a safer option. And, you know, obviously there's going to be good Christians out there. It's not the whole thing is mm -hmm. completely corrupt. It's just the fact that you don't really need a third party to access the, your divinity. Um, 
And I think it's down to interpretation, but I have met really good vicars and priests and, you know, who've got really the right kind of vibration to hold space for people. So I'm not denig- I'm not downing the whole of Christianity. I just, you know, this is a religion which is sets quite unrealistic expectations of people's behavior and doesn't really have any powerful female models in it, role models. Well, they erased them, didn't they? That's the yeah. point. Yeah. Two choices, really. No, I'm going on the horse side. I don't want to be the virgin. But um say, say that again. For a while. Because I talked over you. So say, say that again. I said you either get to be a whore or a virgin in Christianity. You're either Mary Magdalena or you're the Virgin Mary. And I said I'm going on the horse side because I don't want to be a virgin. I don't want to be a nun, you know, all that stuff. And that's what's me. <laughs> I laugh a lot. Well, yeah, the poor's have more fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're more know, real. They're more real. I mean, you can only be a virgin for a very short while of your life. And then the rest of the time, well, hopefully, <laughs> you're not. Um, but you know. <laughs> Mary Magdalena was called a whore because she was a bright woman who was basically Jesus as equal. And the concept yeah. of that 400 years after they died was just too bitter. They needed willow. It was too unpalatable. So, you know, she had to be a prostitute, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Romans tried to um, take over the teachings of the Essenes, which was the, the sect that Jesus and Mary and all the other disciples were in. And they destroyed loads of the the um, documents that, that the women disciples had written and hidden them. And then some have come back to light, you know. But, but Mary was Jesus's wife, Ooh. actually. Yeah. As far as I know, I mean, like none of us was there. Well, maybe we were there. I, who knows? But but I understand from reading Lawrence Gardner's stuff, and he seems to have done his research. And not um, other people as well say that that she was his wife. That's why she's at the Last Supper. And uh, why wouldn't she? And she was supposed to have met Jesus through Mary because Mary was at the same mystery school she was trained in. So they were all, you know. They were there was initiation schools back then that people went to and properly learned about this spiritual practice and how to basically be a priestess. And we need those back again, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think this whole seeking out another guru or somebody to listen to, to tell you what to think or what to do and how to become a more spiritual person. Again, it's like trying to replace the uh, fallen authorities oh, no. Oh, no. with the hollow legs and the you know fell off their pedestal was with someone else who is is not going to serve you you have to go back inside haven't you really that's the something, something else happened let me go just on. say something hold on to it mind valley the guy from mind valley have you guys seen him he's always promoting mind valley he's like a, a um young attractive age. oh he's talking about all these people who manifest stuff manifesting money all the time and i'm just like this yeah. is what this is about and it's like these people that are like the new spiritual gurus as you say trying to direct everyone go everyone's following them and i'm just thinking i don't like what they're saying anyway finally yeah. what were you going to say tamar so there was another thing that happened i can't remember all the details the vatican have been preparing documentation or process or a policy around how to manage if like an ethereal being appears or something and so everyone's going mental, going, something is about to happen. They know something, something's about to happen. What's going on? Because also, and this might not be at all related, but it popped into my head, is around the Pentagon. Yeah. The government building in America, one of them, there's like a measure that when the local pizza places get really busy, something big's about to happen. Because that means well, the they're all again. Really hours. <laughs> That's how they measure it. Just before a huge war kicks off. The pizza places get busy because they're all in the office 24 7 trying to sort something out and that's how they feed them all it's like something something is coming i thought you I meant these two something. things are related yeah yeah we don't want to talk about that one right now Ooh, wow well maybe we do i have you seen king charles's portrait yeah i thought it was quite it felt, like it felt pretentious or something dark is about to happen yeah it's really sinister yeah bright oh. red like he's on fire well, it's like, mm, I, I like red, but, you know, I haven't yeah, I like red too, but in this context, it looks really weird. So it looks weird. Like what we're, what you seem to be alluding to. Um, and, you know, 
I think that possibly the Vatican, <laughs> the Vatican preparing for the existence of an ethereal being is more like the Vatican realizing the game is up and they have to admit that ethereal beings actually exist. So they have to be the first mm -hmm. people to discover it. It's like the marketing. It's like, quick, you know, bring it in house like they did with Joan of Arc. Bring it in house. She was a witch. We burned her for being a witch. The, the Catholics went, quick, get her in house. She was a saint. You know, she was one of ours because that's how we can explain how she managed to do all those amazing things. And they're still doing it. This is all fucking marketing, basically, at the end of the day. So it's like, right. And everyone, right. oh, the tides are changing. People are becoming more sovereign. How do we basically stop that happening or make it look like our idea so we're still ahead of the game? It's just like, wow, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, isn't it? It's just such a load of old cobblers. <laughs> Fascinating, though, isn't it? Absolutely oh, fascinating. I love our discussions. I love yeah. them. I had no idea that Hollywood was getting it. It's just wrong. <laughs> I love the idea that pizza. I literally thought you meant that any time Joe Public was mass eating pizza, there was going to be world war. So I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, I thought it was all to do with the child trafficking, but there you go. <laughs> no, different. But there's all kinds of nefarious activity going on in this world because whatever is we can conceive, it is possible that someone's already doing it and yeah. you know, part of one. But it, again, it comes back to this morality. People mm -hmm. have ability to themselves and the higher up and the richer they get, the less accountable they want to become because they keep outsourcing it. And it's like, no, you are accountable. I think you're so clear. That's really good. Outsourcing your morality. I think that's a brilliant description Taking that it's, it's like it's like um carbon offsetting <laughs> it's just like okay i, I mean I, I i don't even want to go there with the carbon because i don't think that is the issue in the first place that's not the problem with the planet yeah, but it it's like what people are trying to solve their consciences so they go well i'll just spend some money and offset my my carbon expenses and then I'm fine. I can carry on doing what I'm doing. Or I can say the rosary beads or I can, you know, buy a charity or something or another. Jeff Bezos, his wife took their alimony money and she gave it all to charity or a large chunk of it. That's pretty cool. You wouldn't have given all of it, June. Yeah. No, no, she wouldn't have given all of it. She kept millions and millions. But and again, it's that vanity project, isn't it? It's like... Mm. If you really there's a little more to her. I don't know who the person is. Because she gives, I suspect she does have some, but it because it generates interest and creates more, the amount she's given, it feels like a little bit more. I don't know if it's like a you to him for I'm going to do this with the money that you earned. I don't know. I think she's a little more on the light side than the dark, but I, I don't know. I, 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 that's that. the feeling I got. I And I didn't look into it in detail, but that's the mm. feeling I got. And therefore that will be true. But she it, was redistributing the ill-gotten gains. But the yeah. bit, but the yeah, yeah. But it's that thing of if you're really going to do something kind, you don't need to tell anyone about it. Yeah, it's just you know all of this stuff. If you're really going to do it and you're going to do it well, you don't need the kind of you know the the recognition, external validation. The only person you need to validate is yourself. Back to that again. Yes, it came full circle. I mentioned that at the beginning. Was that just before we started recording? I don't know. Yes, yes I think you were I telling us about being a doula. Tell us about being a doula. Theme last week was was about external validation and me struggling with letting go of needing that and feeling like I hadn't got there yet. Huh. And then today I got some validation because somebody wants me to be at their birth. And they're quite happy to pay me the full price that I'm asking. And and I just, like, I feel so nice. That feels nice. That is it validation or is it feeling valued? Is it, maybe it's not about validation. Sorry, Clara spoke. Oh, you. that's a, that's a, yes, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't Because you kind of had both. a negative spin that I shouldn't have to need this external validation, but maybe that's not what it was. It's about being valued for you and your skills. Yeah. That is it. And it's about the fact that when it feels good, because everything is about feelings, then it's right. And that is what causes the kind of the good flow of the kind of, you know, make sure you get paid what you're going to give because it's keeping the balance. And then it feels good. You feel like, you know, you've done something right. And when it doesn't feel right, because someone's exposed you, taken advantage of you, that's when it gets imbalanced. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Although people can feel good about abusing people, so I don't know. I don't know if they actually feel good. I think they feel it. Yeah, it's well, it, it satisfies something in them, doesn't it? But I don't think they would feel entirely good about it. It would be a dirt. Not in their heart. No. Not in their um, heart. And that's where we've got to keep coming back to. The heart and how we feel about things. Yeah, it's just, it's feeling aligned, isn't it? And I was noticing this weekend when I was giving the tarot readings, I was noticing that when I overgive, when I over channel, which I am very prone to doing when I'm doing circles and, you know, I'm doing them for free or whatever. When I've done something out of balance, I crave sugar. I get really, because it canes your blood sugar levels. But when I haven't, when I've done it just right, and I use my protective aura sprays and they really work to do that, I don't have any need for sugar. And so I can I can tell now when I've over stretched myself and yeah. when someone's been given more than they've given me. So. Sure enough. You did a little reel about that, didn't you? I saw that. That was very good. Mm. Thanks, June. Yeah, I really... And that was a situation where it blew up in my face. Someone let me down last minute for a, who was a reader at my event. It could have gone very wrong. Trying to think about who else to do it. And then I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'll just do it myself. And I had nine very successful readings. And I was like, I don't know why I don't do this because I can do this. But I needed to be pushed to do this to show that I could do this. It's like mm -hmm. taking out of the situation. Am I going to be feeling really upset this person's let me down at the last minute? Or am I just going to accept that that's the situation and to run with it and not feel any? And I just feel gratitude towards the person now because they played a part, even though it was stressful, in my development. So That feels like a gateway event that opened something. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes, and that's how it felt today, too. It, it was like a door had opened because I'd been talking about this situation a bit with, with you and some other supportive people and um and yeah and it's like okay maybe now i am stepping into that and what you're doing Please. is you know well worth that you know it's like the time it's gonna take you know the the ma the magnificence i mean that i think that's even too less i mean i know people that were asking for four so you know well it depends on how much time yeah. people are getting free because there, there's all the prenatal stuff exactly if i see somebody many months before i haven't been for this one it's just started and the baby's due very soon and then there's going to be some postnatal stuff and so she said but if it goes above that then we will discuss that just a oh, beautiful beautiful discussion we she was willing to to go she had integrity it sounds like value. she has that she really had, gets it. And those are the kind of clients I like to work with. Yes. Yes. And somebody I do a home visit for said to me the other day, do you want some extra? And I went, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. Receiving with grace, ease yeah. and grace. Yeah. I've been yeah. doing a thank you more, please activity. Yes. Well, I'm still doing the whole Pono thing. It's a Hawaiian prayer as well. I just say great ease and gratitude, and that seems to work with me. That's I, lovely too. Gratitude. Yeah. Are we done? On that note, that sounds like a nice oh, positive yes. way to end. I have somebody coming in a minute. So that's okay. Good. Thank you for seeing everyone. We'll see you all in about three weeks because we're now going to back realign with the moon. So we'll see you on the. I think it's <laughs>